Did somebody say ice cream? We all have a different idea of a dream car build. Some people beef up the suspension, throw on some off-road tires and hit the trails. Some strip it down and take it to the track. Others, like my man John, buy a little teeny, teeny, tiny van from Japan and turn it into the most badass ice cream truck ever built. It's time to go bumper to bumper on this 1992 Daihatsu Hijet ice cream truck. It's hot, but luckily we've partnered with NOS Energy Drink for this episode of Bumper to Bumper. I couldn't be happier because NOS Energy Drink gives me that good energy both in my body and in my mind to be the host that I know I can be. Now back to the show. Big bro loves himself some ice cream. But when Christina said that we'd be doing an episode on an ice cream truck, I wasn't exactly crapping my woolen trousers with excitement. Unless it's the ice cream truck from Twisted Metal, that thing is freaking rowdy. But then I saw this truck and got real pumped. You see, this van and shaved ice business is a family affair. From the build to the custom paint job, down to how this business operates, is all done by one close-knit family. The owner slash builder of this cute little guy, John Salazar, wanted to do something different. John's history of car modifications goes back generations. He was born in LA where his grandfather owned and operated a shop where they built custom lowriders. When John became old enough, he started learning the trade from his dad, Luis, at his shop in Florida. John says if you had a question, he had an answer. They carried on the tradition at his father's shop, building extravagant custom lowriders. When John turned 18, he enlisted in the Navy and was shipped off, quite literally. The Navy uses ships. I don't know if you knew that. He had stints in many different places, but the ones that stuck with him were Japan and Hawaii. You can tell. Nowadays, John has a family of his own. And one of their favorite family activities is going to car shows. And it was at one particularly sweltering South Florida car show that John had a revelation. No one was selling anything cold. You guys can tell by my face, it's hot as frick down here. And no one at the entire car show was selling anything cold? The heck? So his son suggested that they do ice cream. But then John remembered how popular shape ice was when he was stationed in Hawaii. There was nothing like it anywhere close to these car shows in Florida. And before you blow up in the comments, I know there are shave ice places in Florida. I'm not a freaking idiot. But are there shave ice places near car shows in Florida? No one knows, no one will ever know. The point is John saw a potentially killer market by bringing shave ice directly to them. He knew that he was gonna sell. So it was time to figure out what he was gonna sell out of. John found a sweet VW Vanagon and scooped it up. He was about to start working on it with his dad when the family fell on hard times and was forced to sell the V-Dub. Life is hard. Things get better if you keep an open mind. Just a little tip from your big bro. Luckily, things got better for John and his family and they started looking for what would become their new shave ice truck. They looked and looked and finally, something popped up. It wasn't the cult favorite van again, but it was still something really special. This 1992 Daihatsu Hijet Microvan. This was a stellar find, as Daihatsu didn't sell many vans in the United States. High jets were a popular K truck in Japan and a bunch of other places where space is an issue. Not in the US. We like our vans like we like our jeans. Big and wide. I'm talking Jinkos, baby. Export high jets got massive 993cc three cylinder engines that put out a small herd of 50 hearses. You could choose from a three speed auto or a five speed manual. These tiny trucks even came with all wheel drive as an option, but the one that John bought off of Greg's list wasn't exactly stuck. 
inside the microvan was the engine and transmission from a Honda Goldwing motorcycle. Definitely a weird swap, but definitely, also definitely an upgrade. The high jet was a unique find, but it was in bad shape when it got to John. The engine barely ran and the whole thing needed some TLC. brought the van to his dad's shop and they started fixing it up. John knew that because this van was so rare, finding many of the replacement parts was probably not gonna happen. So instead of waiting around for overnight parts from Japan, he and his dad used whatever they could make work. They installed a brake master cylinder from a Volkswagen Bug and threw in an 8.8 .8 rear differential from a Ford. John decided to leave the Goldwing engine in because, you know, why not? It's, it's already in there. It's located right in the middle of the chassis and it hangs a bit lower than the stock engine. This presented a problem because he initially wanted to drop the van lower, but there's only about five inches of clearance between the engine and the asphalt. So that plan was ditched. No worries though. Now that they had all the engine internals and other mechanical necessities working properly, John and his dad had the freedom to start tricking this thing out. <laughs> they added these sick reupholstered Recaro seats by E3 Customs with racing harnesses from Seatbelt Planet, custom fender flares, and 15 inch fat lace F01 wheels by AME. The whole back is set up for slang and ICs. Inside, you'll find everything you need for delicious shave ice. A generator, chalkboard for advertising, syrups galore, and a butt ton of ice. And they used to have two working sinks back there that could pump out both hot and cold water, but those got taken out to make more room for storage. Just wash your hands with melted ice, all right? It's the same as water. Everything on this van was done by John and his father, Luis. Even the amazing airbrush job. They chose striking colors that would pop even in a sea of eye-catching show cars. They even custom fabricated the mascot, Snokio, that lives on top of the van. When it came time for John to pick a name for the business, he hearkened back to his days on the Navy base in Japan. People native to Tokyo had a nickname for the city whenever it snowed, Snokio. So John chose to call his business Little Snokio. And this mascot's name is Snokio. Oh, Though the micro van was mainly John and Luis's hands-on project, the reason John wanted to build it in the first place was so he could spend more time with his whole family. So now John's wife and their two kids join him in the hijack wherever it goes. I saw him driving down the road. I went to get snacks. Together they hit up as many car shows as they can, slanging shave ice to sweaty car nerds like you and me. Guys, I'm so excited to announce that our podcast, Past Gas, is live. You can check it out anywhere that you can listen to podcasts. Past Gas, it's all the fun stories from car history. It's like this show, but an hour long. Uh, it's Past Gas, not about parts.